<clears throat> okay, I think we can get started. We have three online. So, so welcome to the uh, ECE 5510 random process class. And my name is E. Joe. You can just call me E. And my office is on the MEB building on the third floor. So this course will be uh, we will we'll be talking about some advanced theories uh, on probability and the random process. So this is like a more, much more advanced version of the uh, elementary probability that we we learned in the thirty five thirty. And uh, so we will be meeting in this room uh, Tuesday and Thursday at this time and. And the office hour I propose uh, is on the same day, 1 to 3 p.m., either in person or via the Zoom meeting. And uh, uh, does this time work for everybody here? Okay. But you can always uh, schedule an individual meeting with me uh, via email. And we, I put everything uh, on the Canvas page uh, we have lecture notes. We have 26, 25, 26 lecture notes and uh, 12 homeworks. And also in between, we have two midterms plus one final exam. So it will be a very, uh, it's a very heavy loaded course. Uh, I will try my best to finish all the lectures, but we will see. And the textbooks we are using, um, they are available online. You can find these course notes on the probability with engineering applications by uh, Hijack at uh, Illinois. So this is a course notes that Hijack develops when he's teaching at the uh, UIUC. So you can always get a soft copy uh, by following this URL. And the other one is uh, notes on random process for engineers. So the course lecture, uh, the lecture notes of this course is are uh, developed from from these two uh, books. So this course, uh, in this course, we will be talking about uh, modern probability theory. And uh, so this includes a lot of fundamental uh, aspects of probability. So we will, first of all, we will revisit what is probability? Um, what is the issue of the classical probability theory? And then we will develop a fundamental, a new framework to describe and characterize the, uh, all the concepts in the, in the probability. And in particular, we will talk. We will be after that. We will be talking about conditional probability, random variables, independence, and uh, lots of advanced concepts uh, in the probability theory. So these concepts are very useful and fundamental to to analyze and describe the uh, random phenomena, the stochastic phenomena that we encounter in our daily life, especially in the engineering areas. And after that, we will go to the random process part. We will, we will be using the tools that we developed in the first part of this course to analyze uh, a lot, lots of uh, different types of random processes. And these random processes can be used to describe a lot of phenomena that we see in physics in uh, a lot of areas, engineering, communication, So uh, the grading for this course is divided into three uh, categories. Homework will take 30%. Uh, we have 12 homeworks. And then in between we have midterm one, midterm two and final exam. So this time, uh, because we have in-person students, we have online students over Zoom and we have some offline students. So I will, uh, I will make the exam take home. So you have 24 hour take home exam. We'll talk about that later. So in this way, we have more time to, to go over the lectures because 26 lectures is a uh, quite a bit load. 
for, for one short semester. And in the end, I always encourage everybody to provide course feedback, uh, which will count for 2% two ex, two extra credits. So this is the bonus part. And, and this is the grading uh, criteria. So for the homework uh, submission policy, you can sub, uh, you please submit it to the Canvas page. Well, I have this, uh, if you go to the assignments section, you will see the homework links, homework pages. You can submit it there. And also, uh, so the due date will be posted on Canvas. Uh, I will specify that later. So the policy is that we will not accept uh, late submissions. Uh, but if you have, if you get some, get into some conditions and need some uh, de uh, deadline extension, you have three chances to extend the deadline by one week. Okay, so twelve homeworks, you have three chances to extend them by one week. However, you must inform me by email formally in advance. And solutions will be posted one week after the due date. So, uh, so this will make sure everybody, uh, nobody can access the solution before the before their homework submission. So this is the homework policy, and exams. As I said, we have three exams. They are open book, twenty four hour take home exam. We will uh, specify one day to take this exam. So this. You can take it at night if you want, and you. Uh, this is open book exam. You can, but you must work fully independently. Uh, you can use calculators, but most likely uh, you don't need that. And you can also use refer to some table of integral integrals if necessary. But again, most likely you don't need that. Uh, you are not allowed to communicate with others, share materials, and you are not allowed to have access to the internet. Okay. You have to work it fully independently. And for the homeworks, you can always uh, discuss with your uh, with your classmates or friends. But after discussion, you have you must complete the homework. Uh, write down the proof, calculation steps, all independently by yourself. So the discussions are encouraged. And uh, you, you cannot use solutions from previous terms or from a solution manual, but you, you, you cannot find it online because this, these are all, all new materials. So they are totally new. But uh, plagiarism will be penalized. Uh, you will be the grade for the for the homework will be uh, removed. Will be assigned to zero if, if plagiarism is found. Okay. And this is the a brief. Okay, up to here. Uh, are there any questions regarding the policies and the? But you said the due date for the homework aren't posted yet. They are not posted yet, but so what happens is that if you go to home page, um, I will add the due date here, and also I will uh, I will specify due date. Uh, wait, wait. So if you go to the assignment um, and click here, you will see a due date later on. Once I once I have it, yeah, it depends on how fast. Well, we are going in the lectures. Yeah. Um, how often do you expect it to be like once every week or so? Or? Yeah, so we have 26 lectures, you know, 12 homework. So it's about two lectures per homework. And that should be, yeah, one, one homework per week, most likely, because we will have. We have two lectures per week. Each lecture, we I plan to go over one lecture note. So, so most likely it will be one homework per week.
And uh, if if there's any question over the Zoom, please feel free to uh, unmute yourself and ask. Okay. And this is the brief outline of the course materials. So we will start from the uh, very fundamental concept of probability space. This is like we have to revisit uh, the, the origin of probability, revisit the history of probability, understand the, the advantage and disadvantage of the classic probability theory. And then we're going to start to develop a fundamentally uh, the, the, the fundamental framework of the modern, modern probability theory. We start from set theory and we will uh, consider some probability axioms and based on those axioms, we can build the entire modern probability framework. And we, we will see the issues of the classic probability theory. So uh, we have some examples to illustrate that. So once we have this modern probability theory framework, we can use that to do some, to calculate some, uh, the probabilities of some simple problems. And we, we will then talk about uh, conditional probability and Bayer's rule. And then in the second part, we will introduce a very important concept called random variables. And in, in this course, we will uh, define the random variables probably in a very different way uh, from what we learned, what we, what we may learn in the, in the 3530. So this is a very modern definition. Uh, we, we will see it later. And then based on this definition of random variables, we can define a lot of uh, important concepts, density, conditional distribution. And once we have, we have this uh, basic tools, we can then talk about some uh, well-known, a very popular distribution of random variables. Exponential, Gaussian, geometric, binomial, these are very uh, well-known distributions that we encounter in many applications. And after that, we will, we will be talking about functions of random variables and this, uh, some, some of the important statistics of the random variables, mean, variance, and moment generating functions. So this random variable is a, is a scalar. So later on, we will generalize it to high dimension. We'll be talking about random vectors. If you have a random variable that has multiple uh, elements in it, so that is a random vector. Because nowadays, we always talk about machine learning or data science. And in, this, in these areas, uh, we, will be, we will deal with a lot of randomness that in the high dimensional space. And then we will go to the convergence, convergence uh, behavior of random variables. Um, let me see if we are. Yeah, so we'll talk about, uh, this is an extremely important concept of uh, random uh, variables. So what is the convergence behavior of random variables? Because in, in, in mathematics, we talk about sequences and functions. Then we define the continuity of function, differentiability of function, right? So this, this is something uh, similar to that. When we, took a, when we talk about a random process, it is like a sequence of random variables. Now, what are the convergence behaviors of those random variables? And are they significantly different from each other? So these are the questions uh, that we will be considering. And, and uh, in the end, we will uh, 
reconsider the weak and strong law of large numbers. So you may you may uh, have learned about this in the 3530, but this time in the in the modern probability theory framework, we we may have some new understandings. And once we have all these fundamental stuff um, built, we can start to talk about random process, uh, which is the probably last part of the this course. So we will, we have uh, numerous random processes. Uh, and each random process, you can find many uh, motivating examples in many different uh, engineering areas. So that's, that's how, that's why this course is fundamental course for uh, advanced levels of electrical engineering. And I think in between, we will be talking about a lot of applic applications like Bayesian estimation, different estimation methods. Um, these are very, very useful and important estimation approaches that we use to develop communication systems and uh, in the signal processing detection and estimation areas. Okay. Uh, yeah, that, I think that's the brief outline. So any any questions, any comments? So so this, I would say this course is very, very fundamental, as fundamental as calculus, but it is an advanced level course. So we are trying to avoid uh, some technical stuff uh, if you take the probability theory in the math department, it will be a completely different picture. Right. They will start from very, very, uh, probably start from the real line and talk about the major theories. But here we are trying to avoid those mathematical details and trying to develop it in a, a acceptable level for electrical engineers. Uh, but but in the end, it is a bit advanced. So you, you, you will have to uh, feel comfortable, make yourself feel comfortable uh, by playing with all these kinds of definitions and uh, concepts. Sometimes they are a little bit confusing, but once you figure them out, you will have a very precise and uh, very deep understanding uh, of, of probability. Like, I took this class many years ago. Okay. Just starting a PhD, and it was because of what you said that I just felt I needed to reestablish that fundamentals for me to start a PhD when I didn't just start a PhD. Yeah. Kind of, I, I agree. And while well, I understand from a high level, well, I could really learn some things, but I do see it's important. And I've seen that in my career that I work at L3 Harris. Many, so, many applications. So what, what area are you working in? Um, I'm in the uh, advanced DSP and signal processing okay. areas of modems. Yeah. Correlators. And Maybe filters? Filters, filters yeah. yeah. Yeah, those are highly related to the concept of uh, probability and randomness. Yeah. So, and also, this is also a, nowadays, this is also a fundamental course or prerequisite course uh, for machine learning and uh, you know, those, those fancy stuff. If you want to take those courses, this is, um, this is uh, uh, something you cannot avoid. So, uh, and in the electrical, in the EC department, we do provide this advanced fundamental probability course. Uh, you won't. You, you will not find it in other departments. In school of computing, we only have thirty-five thirty. They do have some machine learning courses, but without uh, understanding the probability in this level, you you will get confused when you deal with the randomness in the in the machine learning. Okay. And in the follow-up courses, uh, maybe in the next in the next year, we we will provide some follow-up courses on machine learning and data science that connects to this course.
uh, but I can have I do have one slide to show the importance of this course. No, it's not this one. And to find note. Maybe it's not. Okay, but basically, I cannot find it right now, but, but basically, um, okay, I think it's here. Okay, MacBook, come on. Yeah. So this is a the curriculum for the signal and system areas in the ECE department. Uh, you see that we have some uh, 3,500 fundamental signal system. This is a core course for the for the undergraduates, uh, ECE e, uh, students. And then after that, you can take all kinds of uh, signal processing, digital communication courses. And on, the, on this side, you will find 3530, which is the engineering probability statistics. This is an introductory level probability. And then after that, we go to random process, which is this course. And actually, if you look at uh, this diagram, this course is a prerequisite for all these advanced graduate level courses in the, in the signal system area. So that's why this is a very fundamental course. In fact, for the, even for the digital communication signal processing, these courses, you will also need the concepts that we introduce in this course. Yeah, especially for information theory, uh, that's an advanced uh, course for communication and estimation theory. If you want to design ra radars or other signal processing uh, devices, you will need you will need this. So they are all based on a very deep understanding of the random process. And uh, if you need some special accommodations for the exams or uh, homeworks, please contact uh, contact me and uh, also the CDS. Yeah, so that's the brief introduction to this course. Okay, so do we have other questions? No questions? Okay. Um, yeah, so we can first, I think we can st start with lecture one, which is a very uh, brief introduction. We'll be discussing some, okay, yeah. Yeah. You don't have to buy. What? This is random process course class. Okay. So yeah, you don't have to buy. You just uh, copy that URL and you can get it. I, I believe so. Let me try it here. Okay. 
Yeah. Okay, it works. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we we do have some reading uh, suggestions at the end of the lecture notes. You will find that you can you can also read these books if you if you like. Okay. Other questions. So uh, maybe before that, I, I want to ask one uh, open question. So what do you expect to learn from, from this course uh, when, you, when you registered for this course? Do you, do you have any specific uh, applications or uh, any research problems that uh, motivates you to, to, to take this course? statistics from it being a like white Gaussian noise like you could estimate further estimate and uh, figure out how to undistort your signal. Yes, exactly. So this is actually um that's why we developed this course in the in the ECE because when you talk about communications signal processing and uh, moreover information theory, uh it's basically found essentially a lot uh, everything is about probability the the language the basic language we use is uh, probability um you will also see that because uh, for myself i work in the machine learning and the deep learning area so so in my research i i when i read papers read the reports or write papers you have to write something about probability everywhere this is the basic language that you can commun communicate with other uh, other folks in the in this area yeah so when you do a classification or a regression task you will ask yourself uh, okay I, I would like this model to predict the probability uh, well the, pro the probability of this image that falls into a certain category right so that's the vacation uh, concept so everything will be uh, everything that we describe in this will be using this probability language. So that's the pretty much the the, the basic motivation of uh, uh, taking this course. Yeah, I think we have. We have some uh, something about that when we go to the uh, random process part. So we can start from uh, lecture one. We have about one hour left, 45 minutes left. And we can briefly talk about the, the introductory lecture. Um, so by the way, this is the, the format of this lecture notes. Um, yeah. So you will see that uh, on the canvas, you can find the full lecture note for all the lecture notes, okay? So you don't have to take lecture notes in class. You can always download them uh, on the canvas. So in the class, I will follow this lecture notes and uh, go over the materials using this. Uh, Google note, okay, I will write the lecture note down. So we will discuss the problems, the definitions uh, one by one, but you can always uh, download this lecture notes. Yeah. 
So for lecture one, we will we will be some uh, con conceptual stuff. So I will not use the Google Note. We will just follow the le lecture note directly. Yeah. So I think before we talk about the probability, we can we can reconsider some concepts that we are familiar with in in the uh, in the nature. For example, uh, a fundamental question that a lot of physics asked uh, in the in the past is that is the nature intrinsically random or deterministic? If you look at the physics laws, you will see that at a large scale, if you talk about universe, the solar system, gravity, uh, these, these uh, universe, uh, Milky Way, galaxy, the solar system, they are determined. They are determined by the gravity law. Yeah. And gravity law is a deterministic law. Uh, you can use it, follow the Newton's law to predict and analyze the orbit of all those units in the universe. So that's in the in the large scale. But in a micro scale, when we look at atoms, uh, those tiny stuff, before quantum theory, people try people are trying to use classic uh, Newton theory to 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 understand those uh, behaviors of atoms. But then we, we see a lot of failures uh, to explain the experiments. So it is the quantum theory that really give us a very a novel and precise, accurate understanding of the atoms. But one of the most important uh, feature, prominent feature about quantum theory is that it claims that everything, the behavior of atoms is random, right? Uh, for example, I'm not an expert of quantum theory, but uh, one thing that I remember is that when you describe the the behavior of electrons, we are not describing the electron by a, uh, as a particle, as a small ball. Rather, we, we describe the behavior of, of electrons using probabilities. We will say, okay, this is the probability of the, the electron that appear in a certain location. And that probability is proportional to the magnitude of a quantum wave uh, governed by the Schrodinger equation, right? So in the micro scale, it happens that, it seems that the, the nature, the atoms are governed by, by randomness. The order at behavioral atoms is described by probability. And this is one of the biggest gap in, the, in physics. So, it's very hard to unify this, uh, to, to come up with a unified physics law. Sorry, can I ask you what class you're in? Uh, this is a random process. What class number is it? 5510. Yeah, you guys have the Angman lab reserved, which is down the hall. This is Cade lab three, and it's reserved by these guys. In CS fourteen hundred, okay, which but, probably fine for today because they're already set up over there. But the, on the reservation page, you guys have Hangman Lab five or so. But uh, on my on my page, I saw it's L two point four. Well, the only reservation system that we care about is the Cade reservation system. We don't do anything off of campus okay. reservation systems. If somebody may have put it in. For the campus is L224. So so which room is that? It's in it's just down the hall in room uh L210. L210. Yeah. Okay. That's that's the Angman lab, and that's so we we have a page that reserves all of our labs. And uh you guys have that lab reserved. So somebody must have reserved that lab with us and then put it in wrong at the campus. Okay, I see. That's why I was wondering why why they are standing an open lab. Open space with no computers. Yeah, yeah. So there are Windows computers over there. Okay. That way you guys. Is there a projector there? There is a projector okay. there on the front row, kind of in the middle. You can plug it into the computer there. Yeah, you know, I don't think you need to move today because they're already set up. Okay, we'll be moving there on Thursday. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Great. We. Okay. I will double. Check. <laughs>
it's way better than than here. Yeah, that's why I'm one. I'm concerning about this this open space. So it's L two ten. I'll update this uh, on canvas. Let's also send the email to everyone. Yeah, and uh, so the goal of this, so uh, here we are considering an engineering challenge, which is uh, can we design a machinery that anyone can use to understand and deal with the random practical scenarios. And later on, we will see that the classic probability theory has some issues when we deal with uh, continuous scenarios. And that's why we need a fundament, we need to fundamentally redesign and reconsider the probability theory. And also, if you take the information theory course, you will realize that um, if you want to understand the complexity and the information, the amount of information contained in a certain object, randomness is the right thing to consider. So information is essentially a kind of measure of randomness in a certain way. When you, um, so this is how Shannon and uh, Komogorov, when they consider the complexity of systems, they develop, uh, they develop this measure of complexity through the, through the randomness. That's why Komogorov first uh, designs this modern probability theory, and based on that we can start to look at the complexity and the information, amount of information of the system. And this is how we calculate the, the number of bits in our communication system. It is designed, it is uh, related to the entropy, which is a measure of the randomness in the communication channel. And the fundamental problem that we are going to address is how do we model, analyze, and deal with uncertainty in practice in a rigorous mathematical way. So when we talk about um, <clears throat> when we talk about talk about probability, like if you flip the fail coin, you have fifty percent get a tail, fifty percent get a head. Now, what does this 50% precisely mean in mathemat mathematically? Okay. Because on one hand, uh, this experiment, if, uh, flipping a coin is random, but on the other hand, uh, we, have this de we have this deterministic chance, 50%. So how do we, how do we model and uh, precisely describe the relation uh, between this chance and the outcome of experiments. This is this is the uh, this motivates us to develop this uh, framework of probability history. So again, we are we aim to develop an engineering perspective. Okay, we are focusing on the engineering perspective on. I guess. Um, yeah, so we will develop an engineering perspective on probabilistic modeling of random phenomena. Okay. Uh, and the, the emphasis is on random variables, understanding and uh, precisely understand, understand and model random variables and their collections. And this is a brief history of uh, probability theory. Uh, date back to the 16th century, Cardano uh, considers that he's, he's the pioneers of probability theory. And then Fermat and Pascal in the 17th century, they, they look at, they are trying to understand the games of chance. Okay. But there we do, we do not have a systematic uh, framework 
to um, to describe probability. And uh, until 19th century, Laplace, he starts to develop the classic interpretation of probability. So basically he considers discrete outcomes. For example, if you flip a coin, you have this head and tail, these two discrete outcomes, they are finite. And then when you calculate the probability about flipping a coin in different ways, is in the end, it's essentially a, a issue, a, a problem of combinatorial in nature. So you will count how many uh, desired outcomes you can observe divided by the total outcomes. That is the probability of that event. So this is our, this is also an intuitive way that uh, most people use to, to, to deal with probability, to understand probability. However, we will see that this, this classic framework has some uh, issues when the outcomes of an experiment can be infinite and can be continuous, uh, which is the case in many, many applications. We always have continuous stuff instead of discrete stuff. So uh, until 1933, Komogorov uh, first did develops the modern uh, probability theory. So he develops several ax axioms to build the modern probability theory. And the major difference is that this theory can handle both discrete and continuous scenarios, uh, uh, random, random scenarios. So it, it allows continuous outcomes. Okay. So if you, when you flip a coin, it's discrete because you only have tail and head. But when you consider the waiting time at a bus station, this waiting time is continuous, but it is not great. And when we deal with this continuous stuff, we have a big issue uh, in the classic, in the classic uh, probability theory. And also uh, at, at that time, when he developed this modern probability theory, it is based on a, in mathematics, what, what is called the measure theory. So, so measure theory is about defining measures of sets. And, the, and this is the, fun, this is the fundament, fundamental of uh, modern probability theory. So if you take this course in the math department, you will have to take measure theory first before that. But here we are trying to simplify and avoid those technical stuff. Yeah, and when we when we consider when we talk about uh, random randomness, random process or probability, we the first thing that we're going to consider is to specify a so-called random experiment of interest. For example, if you want to understand the outcomes when you flip a coin, then we call this a random uh, we call this a random experiment. Okay, you flip a coin you may get two different outcomes and each outcome may, may associate with a different probability. If you draw a die, you may get six different outcomes. Again, each outcome may, may, be, may, may, may associate with a different probability. So all this, you will see all these kind of examples in your daily life. Um, so when you, when you consider uh, the received signal in a noisy communication channel, right? This is also experiment. Well, on the, on the transmitter side, you send out a certain amount of information, a certain signal. Now, the signal gets into the communication channel and the channel may be noisy due to, you know, maybe the atmosphere is very noisy, has a tur turbulence at that time. So then on the receiver side, the signal will be distorted. And this is an experiment. You send out a signal and the, the receiver will receive a certain, certain signal. So the outcome is the received signal. And that could be random in this noisy channel. Good. So we will see a lot of different examples throughout this course. Uh, a lot of different ex random experiments throughout this course. And these experiments, they, they original they are uh, they originate from 
many different engineering areas. So, and we will use the theory that we developed, the probability, the probability theory that we developed to model and analyze these random experiments. And I think uh, I tend to stop here because after that we are going to the the discussion of random experiments. I think I will leave it to the next lecture. Yeah. So um, so are there any questions before I end this? Call? And this class, <clears throat> so um, okay, it's good that we have we now have a new classroom. So I will double check with the with the staff in my department, and maybe that's a mistake. The next time we will be meeting in the L two ten, L two ten. Could you uh, make an announcement with whatever you find in the class? What do you think it's probably? Yeah, I will. I'll assume it's L210 probably, but like just in case it ends up being like somewhere else. I guess. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. I will I will make an announcement and also send an email to everybody. And uh, okay. All right, so that sounds great. Okay, I will see you guys on Thursday. Thank you. Yeah, if you have any questions regarding this course, uh, just feel free to talk to me anytime. Send send an email or walk into my office. I I mostly I will be on campus mostly on Tuesday to Thursday, and sometimes on Friday. So, is there any reading that would be helpful before some of the lectures or in the lecture notes? I think that is not required because the I think the lecture notes actually covers most of the materials in the in the books, and they are I think the development in the lecture notes are is step by step, so it will be a continuous process, and in the end uh, we have something like the recommended reading. So if you are interested after this lecture, you can read those sections in the book. So one question, this is Heidegg, but both the books are by Heidegg, which book is it? I, I believe it's the first book. Okay. Yeah, the first book, the probability one. Yeah, the second one is a random process. That That is probably uh, much more advanced. Okay. We have something online. Uh, yes, Thomas, uh, yes, this is the first lecture. So the things that we are, we're going to have a different classroom for the next time. So, and this is the first lecture. I want to uh, give a brief introduction to this course. And starting from the next lecture, we will be talking about, uh, uh, formally talking about lecture one. So uh, if you have any questions regarding the policies of this course, uh, you can ask 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 them now or send me an email after that. Yeah, I know the class ends at ten thirty, uh, but we we don't really have much to say on the first day of this class. I don't want to scare people on the first day. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think lecture notes is sufficient. But reading is that to maybe they will have more examples, more discussions there. But uh, I think the 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 all the all the sets of lecture notes are self-contained. Yeah. So you don't you don't have to read them, but they are recommend highly recommended. Uh, one more thing in the, the textbooks, or is the homework like written on the same page? I think they are they are separate. Oh. They are not in the textbook. Yeah. So you have to work on your yourself independently. All right. So, and also I have a YouTube channel and I will upload this 
recorded lectures to the channel and I share that channel to, to you guys, post it on the Canvas page. So for any of you, uh, also for the offline students, you can always take the, re, uh, watch those videos at any time and revisit the, the discourse. Okay, so I will stop here.